we've been having a lot of discussion about subcooling. So let's take a look at subcooling. This is an R22 system at, with a fixed metering device and it is properly charged. We do have some values, PSIG and, and some temperatures here. And we'll use these for our example. In this video, we'll take it from the discharge of the compressor to the inlet of the metering device. In uh, the next video, we'll take it from the metering device back down to the compressor. So as our refrigerant leaves the compressor, it is high temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor. And it is 100% vapor. At the beginning point of the condensing coil, it, we are desuperheating this vapor. So what it's going to do is it's going to drop the temperature from 200 degrees Fahrenheit and it's, this is our sensible heat so you'll be able to measure it if you put a thermometer at this point it might be 150 and then we hit a certain point here and we're going to be at 125. In this example 125 is our saturation point so at 125 degrees if we start to remove any more heat it's going to be latent heat so we're going to the vapor is going to be change, begin this change state from vapor to liquid at a point that is designed by the manufacturer and in this example we'll just say right here. So once we hit that point where we hit the saturation temperature when we as we remove heat now we are changing state from vapor to liquid so at this point we're going to be 99 percent vapor and one percent liquid but as we move through the condensing coil and removing heat which is our latent heat again so we are just going to be changing state from vapor to liquid, vapor to liquid, vapor to liquid. Get it, get it to a certain point in the condensing coil. We may be 50, will be 50-50 vapor liquid. And as we continue to remove latent heat, we are going to eventually get to a point in the condensing coil where we are 100% liquid. We can't change state anymore because we are at 100% liquid, and we are now at the beginning of the subcooling part of the condensing coil. So at this point, we are 100% liquid. Now we begin the subcooling. So because we can't change state anymore and we're 100% liquid, any heat that is given off by the refrigerant is sensible heat and we are going to subcool this refrigerant below 125 degrees and we're going to get off give off our sensible heat so the tail end of the condenser is the subcooling part of the uh, refrigeration process and that ensures that we have a solid column of liquid refrigerant hitting the inlet of the metering device now it's important to have subcooling in in our system because if we don't each one of these bends that we have in the in the condensing coil and going into the house any 90 degree bend 45 degree bend sometimes the lines get a little kinked or mushed as they go through the um, outside wall or pulled through the chase anytime we have uh, anything like that it drops the pressure just a little bit so if we are exactly at the saturation point 100 percent liquid with no subcooling if if we hit a little kink or a bend it will drop the pressure a little bit and if you have enough kinks and bends or a long enough line set the refrigerant is going to start to flash back from liquid to vapor long before it hits the metering device inside the house here so it's really important that um, we have an good subcooling and a solid column of liquid to hit the metering device as it enters the evaporator coil. So in this example um, our saturation point and temperature is 125 degrees Fahrenheit and we have as it enters the metering device we have subcooled it down to 105 degrees Fahrenheit which means we have 20 degrees of subcooling and that's more than enough to ensure that we have a solid column of liquid hitting the metering device.